What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Mind Maker kit from Kadas. And on the channel we've actually taken a look at the last two generations of the Kadas Mine. It's an ultra small form factor mini workstation. In fact, it's actually one of my favorite form factors when it comes to these mini PCs. Because this thing is absolutely tiny. It's actually not coming in much larger than an iPhone. And I'll give you a comparison in just a bit. But this is their brand new series too, and they haven't offered the maker kit in the past. So with this, you do get a 100 watt power supply, USB type C cable, and the brand new series two Kadas mine. In this video, I've got quite a lot to cover. So before we get started here, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD keys. I've been using this site for quite some time now. They offer Steam keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 30% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $20.40 for a full Windows 11 Pro key. They're going to email you that key, and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from Settings, we're going to go to Activation Settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed, so we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose Next. It's going to activate Windows for us, and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA for 25% off. This thing is packing some serious power. It's actually got the new Intel Core Ultra 7 258V. With that, we get eight cores, eight threads, and the brand new Intel Arc 140 VI GPU. I've always loved the look of these. Little industrial, little futuristic. Uh, it is constructed of aluminum. And just to give you an idea of that size, Here's an iPhone 15 Pro Max right beside the new Kadas mine. So it is absolutely tiny. The new kit they're offering is actually ready to go out of the box. We've got a one terabyte M.2 SSD with Windows preloaded, but you could always install Linux if you want to. And when it comes to IO, around back here, we've got two USB 4 ports. They are running at a 40 gig protocol, so you could connect an eGPU that way if you wanted to. We've also got a full size HDMI port and two full size USB 3.2 ports. Taking a look at the overall unit, yeah, I mean, this thing will slide in your pocket. Flipping it over reveals this magnetic hatch, and right under here, we've got our M.2 SSD. It's a 2230 PCIe 4.0 drive, and we've got a one terabyte in here from the factory. Now, we looked at the I.O. on the rear, but we've got something special here with the mine. The whole ecosystem is pretty interesting because right under this rubber plug here, we've got the mine link. And basically, what this is going to allow us to do is connect different modules that Kados offers over on their website. So they've got a smaller docking station, some extra I.O. It's also got a volume control knob. They've got a big monitor, which is something I've been wanting to get my hands on. You just kind of dock the mine right there at the bottom. Everything's ready to go for you. Keyboard and portable monitor. But my favorite thing they offer is actually known as the Mine Graphics. It's an RTX 4060 with up to 16 gigabytes of VRAM, and this will unlock real gaming performance out of this little thing. I've actually got one in-house. I will be testing it in another video, so keep an eye on the channel. But since we've got that new Core Ultra Series 2 chip, I wanted to see what it would do all by itself. And when it comes to the Mine Link max speed, 256 giga transfers per second, as opposed to USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4's 32 giga transfers per second. It's basically a PCIe X8 5.0 slot. At the time I'm making this video, I'm only aware of one SKU that they're going to be offering with this same chip, but this new unit is actually powered by the Intel Core Ultra 7 258V. Eight cores, eight threads, up to 4.8 gigahertz. We've got 32 gigabytes of LP DDR5X running at 8,533 megahertz. The GPU is the Intel Arc 140V. It's got eight XE2 cores up to 1,950 megahertz. A 1 terabyte 2230 M.2 NVMe SSD, and it is PCIe 4.0. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is going to be handled by an AX211D2 chip internally. And I believe through my research, this is Wi-Fi 6E. It's actually not listed over on their website. I could be wrong, but I don't think it's Wi-Fi 7 here. The Mind also has a built-in standby battery or hibernation battery, and it's not meant to be run from that battery, but once you put this thing to sleep, you can unplug it and it's going to be in hibernation mode. So you could carry this thing around, move it over to a different monitor, plug it in, and pick up right where you left off. So far, this thing's been really quick, and there's a few things I want to show you here before we get into some real testing, but as you can see, we've got that Intel Core Ultra 7 258V. 
32 gigs DDR5. It's at 8,533. Remember, this is RAM on chip or memory on chip with these Core Ultra Series 2 CPUs. We've got the AI Boost NPU and of course the Intel 140VI GPU. One thing I really like about these mine devices is we do have some type of software from the manufacturer. When it comes to these mini workstations or mini PCs, a lot of the time they just rely on Windows updates and everything like that. But with these CADAS systems, we've got the Mind app. Device info, going to give us a rundown on everything going on. Device mode when unplugged. Remember, we've got that built-in battery and it's really not made for running the unit full time. We can have it hibernate. You can use the battery or sleep. Personally, I leave it hibernate. So if I do unplug this, it'll automatically go into hibernation mode. That way, the next time I plug in power and HDMI, it'll be right back where I left off. Smart charging, it'll only charge that internal battery up to 80%. Driver updates, we can go ahead and check from here. Everything is up to date. Device upgrade, so Windows upgrade, firmware, BIOS. And if we have any other mine products connected, like their Mind GPU, it'll show up right down here in the Mind application. So it's really nice for keeping these units up to date. The first thing I wanted to take a look at here was Intel's new AI Playground. So you can download this on GitHub. I'll leave a link in the description. This is pretty cool. Now it's basically an all-in-one little AI application that will allow us to generate images. We can also enhance, outpaint, inpaint images, answer questions for us, and we can learn more about these technologies. Right now, this is in beta. Uh, they just released an alpha, but I didn't update because I was using this already and it worked just fine. But from our image creation, I mean, we can basically type in anything here. And I actually wanted to bring this up because I believe that this actually only uses the GPU and CPU right now, mainly the GPU. I don't think it's touching the NPU, kind of like OpenVINO. So we'll just type something in. Photo of the world's fastest car, but driven by Hello Kitty. And again, I do think this is only utilizing the GPU and CPU to generate these. This automatically downloads everything for you. 20 steps, and I haven't found the settings where I can step it up a bit with this beta version. I think in the alpha we can bring it up. First image usually takes a little longer. Not too bad, actually pretty quick there. We'll go ahead again. And I'm not seeing Hello Kitty driving it, but yeah, I mean, we've definitely got a super pink car here. Enhance, this is just going to allow us to in-paint and out-paint images. And we've got an answer here. This is basically going to act like Copilot would. From the drop-down, we've got three options with this beta. But I know with the new alpha version of Intel's new AI Playground, you can download the Llama model here. But I'm using Phi 3 Mini 4K. And we'll just go ahead and ask a question. Generate. Oh, that was pretty quick, actually. Okay, this can't be right. The Bugatti SS with the top speed of over 4,000 miles per hour. That's not right. Just to confirm, definitely not 4,000 miles per hour. But I went back, re-asked it, and 273 miles an hour out of the Bugatti Super Sport. So yeah, a little bit of a hiccup there with that first inquiry. But I could drop down, use the Gemini model. I think I'm just going to upgrade to the Alpha soon so we can use that Llama model. And yeah, we got a little baby robot hamster. So yeah, this is pretty cool. It's definitely not relying on that MPU, more on the CPU and GPU, but it's just something easy to use. You know, if you want to test it out, you definitely can. I'll leave a link to the GitHub in the description. It doesn't require any crazy setup. All you really need to do is download it, install it. It'll install the models for you once you start running the tasks, and it's just super easy to use. Next thing I wanted to show off here were a couple benchmarks that I ran on this unit. First up, we've got Geekbench 6, single core 2727, multi 10815. Even with just an 8 thread system, these chips are putting down some pretty decent multi core performance for a low power chip like this. I also ran PC Mark 10, and we got a total score of 6,617. And the final thing I wanted to test here was just a quick GPU benchmark using 3D Mark Time Spy 4439. I've been doing a lot of testing with the Core Ultra 7 258V, and for an iGPU, this thing is putting down some really good performance. 
And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about here. The first game we have on the list is Cyberpunk 2077. We're at 1080p medium with FSR frame gen on. Going up to 1080 on these chips at medium settings, yeah, we definitely need a little bit of frame generation. And of course, we could always take this down to low 1080p with XESS set to performance, but I do think it turns out really nicely like this, and we get that much higher frame rate while playing this game at a higher setting. Next one I tested was Spider-Man Remastered at 1080 medium, and instead of using XESS, since we've got an Intel chip, and even when I'm using AMD iGPUs, I don't use FSR, I use the built-in IGTI scaler. I personally do think it looks pretty good up to a certain point, and it does offer a nice performance boost on any of these iGPUs. Here's Forza Horizon 5, 1080 medium settings. XESS is set to balanced with this one also. And we've got a big upgrade with this new Series 2 Core Ultra chip versus the first one. On the first one, low settings, even 900p, it was hard to break even 60 FPS. But at medium, right now at 1080, with just a little bit of scaling, we're up in the 80s with it. I also wanted to test out Skyrim, so I went with the special edition version. We're at 1080 high, and I probably should have just went in this at 1080 ultra. Pretty sure it's going to run it just fine. Hogwarts Legacy, I had to drop this down to 900p because at 1080, even with XESS set to performance, we were getting those real bad dips. But at 900 low with XESS at balance, we're over that 60 FPS mark and it's a pretty smooth experience here. Just would have been really nice to go up to 1080 with it. And the final game I wanted to test here was God of War Ragnarok, and with this, I'm at 1080 low settings with AMD's frame gen on. So that's really the only way I can get this to go over 60, even at those low settings. Let's say I take XESS to performance with no frame gen, we're right there about 55. And to tell you the truth, uh, AMD's frame gen isn't working very well with these ARC GPUs, but luckily Intel does have their own XESS2 frame gen. Unfortunately, it's not integrated with this game. There's a few on the market right now and more definitely on the way. I've tested it on a few new titles. It does work great with these iGPUs. But yeah, I just can't wait to see more games integrate XESS2 frame gen. The last, thing I wanted, the last thing I wanted to talk about here were CPU temps, TDP, and total system power consumption. I was worried about the CPU temps, but with these Core Ultra chips, they are pretty low wattage when you consider the performance they're putting out. The maximum TDP on this hit 38.7 watts, and that's just using hardware info. Average CPU temps while gaming, 71 degrees Celsius, and the maximum this hit through all of my testing was only 82 degrees Celsius. The fan on this isn't too loud. I mean, you can hear it if you get up close to it. It doesn't sound like a jet engine. And when it comes to total system power consumption, I use a kilowatt meter plugged into the wall. This thing idles at 6.8 watts, and I'm in performance mode. We could actually bring this down if we adjust the TDP. While gaming, on average, this pulled 42 watts from the wall, and the maximum, or the peak I saw it draw from my kilowatt meter, was only 59 watts, so right there under 60 watts. In general, it is a pretty low wattage unit, given the performance we're seeing out of this machine. So far, I've been having a lot of fun with this kit, and I do plan on at least making one more video. I definitely want to show this thing off running with that RTX 4060. But another thing I was really thinking about was just installing Linux and seeing how it performed. I personally haven't tested Linux on these Core Ultra Series 2 chips, and I think this would be the perfect little PC to do it with. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you're interested in learning a little more about this new Kados Mind Maker Kit or the AI PC Dev Kit, I'll leave links in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.